right, everybody wanted a heavy towing review on the 7.3 gas motor. Got my gooseneck hitch put in this morning. It was pretty easy. Well, there it is. We're going to run her all the way up to, uh, up to Laramie, Wyoming. Um, let me get everything shut around here. Cat, 420D, no bucket, but shipping weight's like 15,000. We'll run it across the scale just to so everybody we can see what it does weigh and then um yeah up the mountains we go so i'll uh, record again once i hit the hills all right uh, you saw the weight clip pretty heavy um, yeah i've been on this road i don't know but I'm 25 miles into it now. It's about a 70 mile trip out of Fort Collins up to Laramie. I'm um, coming up on the big hills here. Um, I didn't really record the first few. They're not that big and, and spectacular. They're just kind of long, one or two, three percent. We're coming up on the big ones here and you can, um, everybody's always concerned about fuel mileage. I'm doing 5.2, which, I mean, it seems low, but I do weigh 32,000 pounds right now. Um, Let's see, the other thing, I've run this road, man, hundreds of times. This machine that's back there, that backhoe, is my old boss's machine. Um, when I worked for him, I had a 2017 uh, Dodge Ram 4500, and it would, um, I ran the same road many times, same trailer, same backhoe, same load, right? And the 4500 does weigh a little more than this truck, with, and that was a Cummins. Um, but it was a, it was like a seven mile to the gallon truck with this behind it. So this this isn't that disappointing, you know. Um, a lot of man, I guess I was expecting three or four miles to the gallon. But see, it's holding me back pretty good. We're going downhill. You can see we're about to hit that next big one coming up here. Um, keeping it around 65. That's my speed limit up here. So I gotta watch that a little bit. Man, I'm not even. I'm coming down this hill here. I'm not even holding the brake. It's holding me under 65. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not like the exhaust brake was on the Power Stroke, my 15, but not bad, you know, I can't hate on it. All right, let's let her go and see how she does. She's holding 60. Downshifted yet, third gear. Well, we're losing a little speed. You know, I'm, I'm horribly overloaded for this truck. This is a 355 rear end. You know, the 430s would be really nice. You're gonna do this a lot, makes that first gear a lot shorter. But man, well, we found her power right there, right there at about 4,000. She's gonna pull her. At 50, just shy of 55, I'll take that. I mean, this hill, this is a steep one. This is a probably eight percenter. So we lost up, we're getting down to 50. Oh man, we're drinking the gas now. <laughs> Here we go, everybody's flying around me. Um, but yeah, not bad, top of that hill at 50. I'll take that. Um, we roll right into this next one here. I always does that when I don't have my blinker and I switch lanes. I mean, the fan didn't even come on. It's 50, 50 degrees today? Yeah, 50 degrees. But you can see we're about to climb that next big one right there. We'll go down and hit the bottom, and then that one's, that one's miles long. It goes all the way to the state line. Um, pulling up out of Virginia Dale here, and we'll see how we go. Seventy. This one will pull me down pretty good. This one's miles long. Um, yeah, let her cool off a little. I mean, the fan hadn't even come on yet. We got, we got a transmission temperature. This transmission never even really warms up. I mean, it's 225, which is all right. It's not terrible hot. Go back to fuel economy. We go. There we 
we go. Now we're in the catch up. Yeah, see, we're dropping speed pretty good. But in reality, man, I can't. I think I could only pull this hill. Well, I could, I could hold like 63, 64 in that 4500. The 4500 was a 430 rear end truck too, you know. Um, a little better gearing and stuff, and obviously better set up for doing this than a 250 Ford. But man, not bad. I can't hate on that. 55. I mean, this bugger's a steep one. You're gonna get that guy past me with that camper weighs about as much as the back boom on this backhoe. But I mean, it's not really sky wrapped. It holds its power. I've got that 2008, uh, 2007 Chevy. It's a service truck of mine. Um, it weighs about 9,000. And man, you hook an empty bumper bolt right out of that thing. It's always five, four and a half, five thousand to get any power out of it. You know, I'm holding 50 going up this hill. I ah, man, I can't hate on that too bad. That's pretty good. We haul equipment up this hill with the big trucks. It's a 40 mile an hour hill usually, you know. Well, we're down to five miles a gallon. Oh man, but look at that, she's holding her in third gear. We're back up to 55, we're climbing speed again. We topped off a little, but we're still climbing. God dang, this thing's kind of a beast. This is, you know, you can't even compare this to the previous gas motors of any make or model for the last 20 years. You know, this thing's in its own, really its own field. This is pretty decent. Oh, well, there's 60. We're coming back. I mean, I got her on the floorboard, so we're letting her go. Transmission's warming up a little. Let's see here. Oh, let's go back. Oh, we're at 230. That ain't bad. I'll take 230 all day long. I've seen that before. Man, top. We're kind of coming across the top here. There's 60... 62 mile an hour? Damn, that ain't bad. Well, I'll take that shit all day long. All right, I had to put her down there for a second. Had the state trooper came up and was headed around me. Didn't want to see him recording. But, you know, we're kind of at the top of that hill. Um, you guys got to see all the way through the tough spots. We climb a little bit more coming up here, and then we drop down into Laramie, in the Laramie Valley. But, man, 4.9 miles a gallon, but that's a pull, man. I reset that when I filled up down in town. I mean, you're going uphill the whole way. We're climbing from 4,200, I think, or 4,300 is what Fort Collins is, all the way up to 7,200 feet is where I'm delivering this out in town, downtown Laramie, Wyoming. I mean, and it's not like I'm in this thing. I'm not even floored anymore. It just does its thing. Um, man, I, whew, Ford set it up good. This is a puller. You know, the gas motors in the previous years are not, they're not pullers. I never, I would never, anything like this to any of the, my 6.0 Chevy or the, I don't know, the 5.7 Hemi was decent half tons, but never would I hook anything this heavy to that or the, even the 6.4. I don't know much about the 6.4, but last last I checked the power numbers, the 6.4 Hemi was still in the same ballpark as the 97 Ford 460 was. So, um, man, I believe this thing to be a true 4, 475 foot-pounds. This is, man, I got... I'll take this all day long. If you're going to buy one of these trucks, I usually haul my skid steer and stuff like that on. I usually hang out around that um, 14,000 uh, pounds on the back. You know, that cat back there is like 15,500 sitting on the deck. Or some, I'd have to look. But yeah, it's around 15,000. Um, you know, and then that trailer, that's a big Tex 35 plus 5 or 30 plus 5, 35 footer dual axle tandem. 22,000 pound rated trailer. Um, you know, that trailer is like seven, six or 7,000 pounds. I haven't weighed it empty, but you know, for pulling the skid steers and stuff, this thing's a dream. I couldn't want for any more. I mean, especially now, I can't. I mean, it doesn't pull like my power stroke did, but man, if I don't have to have any emission stuff, I don't have to have that expensive injection system to fail, no turbocharger failure, no nothing, you know, no DPF. I don't have to delete this thing. Ford did a phenomenal job on this motor. This is this is a well done, uh, well done deal. And we're holding 65 pretty good now. We've kind of come. We're still climbing. We got to make it up over Pumpkin Vine and then drop down. Uh, 
but you can see the road here we're still climbing just a little so it's kind of pretty up here after that big old snowstorm but um yeah i mean especially this is as high as elevation the guys usually gonna run right um you know even the higher parts of colorado it's Leadville's 10,000. I've been up there with this. I hauled a pickup up there. It wasn't bad at all. But down where there's a little heavier, this thing would be unbelievable. You know, so um, Ford really did a good job. There's a lot of people say that'll never last like the diesel. Well, I really think they're wrong. Because when you say last like the diesel, the new diesels don't last. The reason the 12 valve and the 7.3 and the early Duramaxes lasted as long as they did is one, they didn't have the heavy emissions restrictions. And two, they were pretty low power. This is in the same power realm that those were. And you know, them old trucks were low boost engines. They were 20, 20 pounds. I think the old 7.3 was 21 PSI was the wastegate setting. You know, so uh, low boost, low heat. They just lasted longer. This is the same kind of a deal. You're in that same power number for cooling capacity, big displacement, big water jackets. My fan never turned on on that whole pole. You know, that's wide open throttle for almost 15 minutes there on end. Uh, this truck was set up to pull. The cooling capacity can obviously handle it. The transmission never got hot. The truck never got hot. I mean, we're thin air. It is 46 degrees out, but in the thin air, um, it's hard to keep a truck cool. That There just isn't as much with the air density being less that the heat transfer doesn't happen as strong. So it's actually harder. Um, it's harder to keep a, a car cool on a 70 degree day in Denver than it is on a 100 degree day in Arizona um, just because of the air being thin. So now oh, there we're going to enter the top. We drop down into Laramie Valley now. The hard stuff's over. Uh, but if you're going to pull a camper with this thing, with the 7.3, there's no doubt in my mind this truck will have plenty enough for you and I th it'll keep you out of the shop. Um, back to the longevity of the motors. We talked about this, the cooling capacity, stuff like that. Um, this is a forged in, forged rod, six bolt main engine. It's got big cr big crank, big big bearings. I mean, it's a cam end block, no cam cam phasers or anything weird like that that you have on the overhead cams that run into issues um, down the road. Um, man, piston coolers. This thing's got piston coolers on it. That's a diesel thing. There's aren't hardly any gas engines out there with piston coolers. Like they set this thing up to run. Um, yeah, I'm, man, I'm happy with this thing. I'm unbelievably happy. It did better than I thought, you know. Um, the Ford, this 10-speed shifts phenomenally well. I can't ask for anything more. It stays locked up when you're pulling hard, and it stays cool. Um, it's not slamming gears. It's not doing anything weird. Um, like I said, if I was to set this truck up to pull something like this day in and day out, I'd do the 430 rear end for sure. This is 355s. But at 355s? I'm, put, I'm pretty happy still, you know, if I had to do this again, I, that's no problem, you know, I'm usually, I'm a semi-truck guy, right, if I'm going to haul this kind of stuff and be this heavy, I want big brakes and I want, you know, jakes and all that stuff, but, man, I can't hate on this thing, this is a, man, it's, it did good, it stops good, it holds you back pretty good for a gas motor, um, if they, <sighs> this motor really makes it hard to justify the diesel with the higher... Um, the higher uh, uh, cost of maintenance, the more act frequent maintenance intervals, um, you know, and plus it, it's, this motor is $11,000 cheaper on the price tag right out of the gate. That's $11,000 in savings, right? So, I mean, that, that alone speaks for a lot, but um, yeah, that's that's my heavy tow review. I mean, that's as heavy as a guy would want to run on a 250. I'm not even a 350 dual wheel. Uh, 32, two, I think is what that number was. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. I can't hate on it too bad. It pulls good. It hangs out. You know, if I was out on the flats, I wouldn't have a. I wouldn't hesitate to set her on cruise and just let her go. Um, but yeah, I'll make more videos as this as this goes on. Um, I've got a lot of people wonder about death wobble. I haven't had any death wobble issues. And I haven't in any of my Fords. I had a 2006 Dodge that had death wobble. Um, that was one of my personal trucks. And um, yeah, I ran into it on that. And what I did, what I've learned, uh, my girlfriend had a 2000 and 
2013 Ford F-250 with the 6.2 gas in it that it did get death wobble but it ended up being tires and I've run into that time and time again you keep your tires rotated you keep good tires under the stuff you usually don't run into that problem um, and the dual steering stabilizer people say ah Ford hasn't fixed the problem put a dual steering stabilizer on it and be done with it you know so um, yeah and I I'm happy with this thing. We're doing good. We're still hanging out here at five miles a gallon. It'll go up now. See now my little bar is getting closer to ten now that we're running out on the flats, you know. So can't hate on that. My six seven was deleted. And uh towing like this, I don't think it would have done seven miles a gallon. You know, it, it was hard on fuel. But it made a lot of power. It was deleted and all that stuff, so you can't blame it on emissions equipment. It was a breather. Um but yeah, that's my review. Pretty good truck.